Hi class, I hope your module on authentic education is wrapping up nicely. Before we start the next moment to democratic citizenship education, Rachel and I quickly wanted to touch base with you about your assignments. Specifically, we're going to discuss the proposals and final project, your philosophy of teaching assignment, as well as the MLC portfolios. And we'll post timestamps for these different assignments below in the description, so you can skip around as needed. So, to start things off, I'm going to hand over control to Rachel to talk about the proposals and your final projects. Thanks, Angus. So I'm just finishing up grading your proposals, so you should get those back the next day or so. It's been really fun reading through your proposals. Uh, we've had a large variety of different topics that are going to be covered in our class conference, um, ranging from K-12 to education to adult learning, including continuing education. Some topics are ones that are only very briefly mentioned in engaging minds, like Montessori schools. Um, so those will be really interesting to look at. We also have quite a few related to e-learning, social media, etc. Uh, so our class conference should be a very rich learning experience. Closer to the start of the class conference, we're going to be setting up a Google Doc where you can confirm your project titles, uh, presentation modality, and how you want your name displayed in our class conference guide. We're going to be grouping the projects into various sessions to help you decide which presentations or products you want to check out during our conference. We don't have our specific sessions just yet, but to give you an idea, here are the sessions we had last semester. Getting real about racism, diversity, and anti-racist approaches to teaching. Competency-based medical education. Inclusive education, creating successful, equitable learning environments. Teaching the health educator. Critical perspectives on learning theories and approaches to education. Innovating current approaches in schooling. And educating the adult educator. And with regards to your proposal, please note that with this assignment, it is really important that you read the feedback so you can build off of this assignment. Scaffolding. Uh, for some assignments, we have asked you also to complete a short reflection paper or a reflection video if you like. Some students prefer that modality. And this is an opportunity for you to further explain the educational issue and your professional decision making in creating your product. Uh, for example, how educational theory may have informed creating your product. And we're doing this to ensure you're meeting all of the assignment criteria and course learning objectives. Uh, because sometimes, depending on the topic, the audience, or the mode of communication you've chosen, it can be kind of challenging to seamlessly fit some of the aspects into the project despite you having thought through them. Uh, so sometimes there can be a lot of behind-the-scenes educational work that gets done on these assignments that can be difficult to actually de fully depict in the project. Uh, so for example, the proposal that I shared on creating the infographic on vaccine hesitancy so the infographic that was created is quite short, it's just one page, and things like the background of the issue, theory, etc. aren't included in the actual infographic itself. However, the student did do a lot of work on that behind the scenes. So in their reflective paper, the student further described the issue, how they identify literature to inform the infographic, and how learning theory influenced how they, as an educator and public health professional, created that educational infographic. And another example, um, last semester we did have a student choreograph a dance and had their dance students perform it, uh, which was incredible. It was a really great example of the power of noses knowledge, I think. Uh, but it can be really difficult to, of course, um, portray some of the assignment criteria like learning theories through dance. Uh, so for this, the student did the, had the dance and was recorded and shared as a video. And then they also did a short report that brought in some of the other assignment criteria. And they made connections between um, the assignment criteria engaging minds, other reading they did, and further connections to the choreography. And as you're working on your final products, I encourage you all to revisit the assignment instructions, course learning objectives, and the rubric that's in the syllabus. I also encourage you all to make sure you're maintaining a focus on education, teaching, and or knowing in your project. While we are encouraging you to apply these different educational concepts to your context and your interests in this project, Education still does need to remain the central concept since this is an education course. Uh, so while we may be exploring topics in other disciplines like the health sciences and languages, just make sure that education is still remaining at the center of your project. And if you're unsure of any of this, please do reach out to us anytime. Email is fine and we can even meet with you on Zoom or Teams to discuss your project. Now back to you, Angus. Thanks, Rachel. Okay. Your next assignment is part two of your philosophy of teaching and learning, which is due March 14th. I thought here I'd address a frequent comment we've received and then share a few tips for writing your philosophy. 
A few students have commented that it is really difficult to write this assignment in only 500 words, and we can relate to how challenging that can be. In fact, Rachel is rewriting her philosophy right now for a job application, so she's particularly sympathetic to how difficult this is. The reason we've assigned such a low word count is because a philosophy of teaching and learning is a document that's often requested for job applications in education. And in these job applications, they usually limit documents to one to two pages. As you can imagine, anything longer becomes a lot of reading for the hiring managers and therefore isn't too popular. Online, you will see some, you will see some examples that are longer. They do tend to be longer once you're a professor and applying for promotion or tenure, but otherwise they're usually limited to one to two pages. For the purposes of this course, it's okay if you go a little over, up to half a page over, but we encourage you to try to keep it concise so that you can realistically use this assignment for job applications. So now let's move on to some tips. The first one is to write for your intended audience. For the purposes of this assignment, forget about me, Rachel, and the course. Instead, think about your career goals and who you would want to share this document with. Maybe you're hoping to become a nurse educator, program director, principal teacher, or maybe you're hoping to apply to a PhD program. Write with that audience in mind. So, if you want to be a nurse educator, write your philosophy for a hospital hiring committee. If you want to do a PhD in education, write for the admissions committee in the faculty of education. Another tip is to make this about you and your philosophy. Your philosophy should be reflective and include your own voice. So please, the, please use the first person, you know, that is I and me rather than one or it is stated that. You, make this personal. And while we do ask that you bring in some literature to support some of your statements, for example, key theories, really focus on illustrating what this means to you and what this looks like in your practice. So make sure this is your philosophy in your words, not Piaget or Vygotsky's words, even though you may draw on their ideas or, or other theorists' ideas. And don't be afraid to bring in your own experiences. Um, that really illustrates stuff well, and this is meant to be a highly reflective document and that you're reflecting on the, the meaning of these theories for your own, own practice. Another tip uh, is to share concrete examples. Your philosophy of teaching and learning should paint a mental image of a typical day in your classroom or teaching context for the reader. So instead of saying you would use scaffolding, uh, share an example of how you currently use or would like to use scaffolding in your practice. That's scaffolding in the educational sense, um, not architectural, of course. In educational sense, it's, you know, uh, guidance or, or other artifacts that uh, support student learning. And if you don't have any teaching experience yet, don't worry. You all have a wealth of experiences as learners to draw upon. Use this experience to illustrate what you would uh, like for your future practice to look like. A final tip is to use us as a resource. Review the feedback we gave you in part one such as learning theories we may have suggested, and reach out to us if you're stuck or have any questions. We're here to support your learning journey. And now Rachel's going to close things off by quickly touching base on your portfolios. So I just wanted to quickly remind you all to keep on top of your reflections in your portfolios, even if it's just making some bullet points that you can expand on later. Uh, so treat the MLC portfolio as a work in progress where you can document your insights and ideas as they're emerging. Uh, this makes for a much stronger learning experience and it does tend to make things much more manageable at the end of the semester when your other assignments are due. And I'll be doing another portfolio check soon, probably the end of this week. I mostly do this just to make sure there aren't any major issues that um, Angus and I need to address, like team dynamics, things like that. Um, it also gives me the opportunity to give you some formative feedback that you can be incorporating into your subsequent reflections. And as a side note, I am really enjoying reading through your portfolios. It does make me a little jealous that I don't actually get to sit in on your conversations uh, because it sounds like you're having some really rich discussions. But the summarizers are doing a lovely job of capturing the main points, so I don't feel like I'm missing out on too much. And that's all for now, folks. Keep up the fantastic work and do reach out to Angus or I if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to talk about the course.